the Fujifilm X100 series have had their prices go a little crazy recently. So I've created the fake Fujifilm X100V, and trust me, it's actually awesome. It's in many ways, it's as good as, if not better, than most of the X100 lineup, and some features it even beats the X100V. And don't worry, the images from this camera can blend in with Fuji's film simulations and film recipes, using a few settings and tricks that I'm going to show you for free in this video. I am packing a lot into the next few minutes, so please use the video chapters to skip through, but do not skip the spreadsheet because it's very important and I worked very hard on it. It's no secret that part of the Fujifilm appeal, especially on the X100 series, is their vintage aesthetic on what is a very modern camera. This is part of what made me buy my X100S. I loved that vintage rangefinder body, but using digital technology. And similarly, this is what made me buy my OMD EM10, which we're talking about today. Compared aesthetically, both of these cameras fit the bill for a minimal vintage style street camera. So when you're carrying this camera, don't worry, people will still ask you what camera is that? Is it a film camera? And they still might think you're just shooting film when really you're burst shooting digital. The biggest question you probably have is are the images going to look the same? They will, but let's start with this. Starting with the focal lengths. Both of these focal lengths give the full frame equivalent of 34 to 35 millimeters. This micro four thirds mount 17 millimeter f1.8 gives a 34 millimeter. And as an added bonus, it actually uses a clutch physical focus ring, which when pushed forward works as autofocus and when pulled back actually provides physical manual focus control that also comes with a zone focus scale. Meaning that in street photography, this becomes much more of a reactive point and shoot rather than positioning autofocus points. Consulting my spreadsheet very briefly, which we're gonna get into more later, we can see that the full frame f-stop equivalent is actually an f3 on the X100 series and an f3.6 on the 17mm f1.8. Which means that if you're looking for some shallow depth of field on some subjects, there's a very comparable experience in terms of the amount of bokeh you're going to get. If you were to shoot simultaneously with both of these cameras, you could put down the X100 and pick up the EM10 and you would get an almost identical field of view and shooting experience. Of course, apart from the optional OVF on the X100. They have almost the exact same field of view because of their full frame equivalent 35mm focal lengths, but on the EM10, we do have a 4x3 aspect ratio because of the shape of the 4 thirds sensor. And it pains me to say a lot of this because I never thought I would be bigging up an Olympus alongside a Fuji, but from having experience with both, trust me, this is a good shout. It is odd, like the more I use this camera, the more and more I feel like a Fujifilm shooter on the inside. It must be because of the size of this camera. And you can see from my spreadsheet that this camera is actually a little bit less wide. However, it is a little bit taller because of like the EVF housing. And with this lens, it is a little bit thicker or deeper than the X100. Part of this size difference can actually be attributed to the shutter system that both of these cameras use. The Olympus OMD EM10 uses a mechanical curtain shutter, whereas the X100 uses a leaf shutter that actually lives inside the lens rather than inside of the body. Compared to editing Sony RAW files, which I find really difficult to work with, the RAW files out of this Olympus are actually very pleasing straight out of camera and very easy to tweak in the right direction to get a Fuji look. If you're used to shooting on something like Sony where your RAW files come out pretty washed out and desaturated, with Olympus you actually get something much more pleasing, similar to Lumix images I find. In terms of contrast and saturation from these Olympus RAW files, they're actually very nice out of camera. So when it comes to getting the Fuji effect, it is much more about redirecting the colors on the HSL sliders and the curves. When we actually begin pushing and pulling the different hues, luminance and curves, on the Olympus images, it's not long until we get that Fuji look for different color profiles. Honestly, of any camera that I've tried to fake Fuji aesthetics with, this is definitely the easiest straight out of camera. I'm going to give you all these settings for you to copy shortly, but first we need to go over something specific that a lot of people like to credit Fuji with. This is going to be faking the color chrome effect. I want to share this really quick tip with you in case you're already practicing copying Fuji colors on Olympus or any other manufacturer's cameras, and that is emulating the color chrome effect that a lot of Fuji recipes are famous for. 
This quick tip is to play with two different things. One is the luminance of each of your colors in the HSL sliders of your app of choice. And the other is playing with the hues between the yellows and the greens and the greens and the yellows. All this work can be done within the HSL sliders, the grading tab, and also the curves. But leave the curves until you're a bit more comfortable with the HSL sliders as well. At the end of the day, it's kind of just like mixing paints when you're at school. And before you know it, you find the exact same tones that Fuji have just baked into their different picture profiles. If you like the colors that I've used on the images in this video so far, you can copy these settings all right here, or I've actually put them into a free preset that I've linked on my website. I'll drop the link in the description and in a pinned comment below this video. The shooting experience of using a Fuji X100 camera is part of the reason why so many pro photographers like to swap in their larger professional bodies for a smaller street style body when they're out doing personal work or street photography. Of course, ignoring the main reason that we can't afford Leicas. <laughs> Now I've used both the X100S and the M10 in a variety of scenarios from festivals to like holidays and also just a lot of street shooting. And to be perfectly honest with you, the only part about the X100S that I miss on this EM10 is the option of the optical viewfinder in the rangefinder body. It has that hybrid OVF versus EVF that you literally just flick a little switch and it feels like a really cool piece of technology to have the EVF just suddenly slide over. However, that did feel more like a party trick rather than something that I actually use particularly often, especially when you added the teleconversion lens, it actually got in the way of the OVF on the rangefinder, which I found a little bit frustrating. And I do use the EVF on this M10 quite a lot, but at the same time, I also like to use the flip out LCD as well. So if you're currently simping for an X100V, you're probably already considering the fourth, third, second, and original versions as the more budget alternatives. And as we know, they are all going up in price at the moment. So I'd like to show you where this M10 with the 17 millimeter lens fit in, in terms of specs, price, and a few other features alongside the X100 lineup. This is the part when you get to see my spreadsheet. Trust me, you're going to love it. Thank you for joining me and welcome to the spreadsheet section of this video. I told you I worked hard on it, so I'm gonna be a very proud spreadsheet dad during this section. I created this spreadsheet specifically to compare this EM10 with the 17mm f1.8 from Michael Four Thirds mount to compare this with all of the X100 lineup. I actually did something similar when I bought my X100S a few years ago to try and weigh up the cost versus benefit of buying an older generation of this camera versus the newest version. For right now, I have hidden all the prices on these models because that will make your buying decision of any of these much easier later in this video. You'll notice that I've put this Olympus OMD EM10 right between the third and fourth generation of the X100 lineup. The key things I want to highlight verbally right now, of course, you can look over it yourself. But the first of those key things is the 81 autofocus points versus the 49 autofocus points of the first three versions of the X100 lineup. I would also like to highlight the touchscreen ability of using this camera for autofocus, which is only equaled by the latest version, the Fuji X100V. This also comes with a 16 megapixel sensor, which is the same as the first three versions, only beaten by the fourth and the fifth. And one of the best party tricks that this camera has is built-in three-axis stabilization, allowing you to get much better, much sharper, slower shutter speed photos compared to all the X100 series that has no stabilization whatsoever. And finally, the eight frames per second continuous shooting mode that is only beaten by the X100V, which costs, I'm about to tell you how much it costs right now compared to all the versions and the M10. We are living in crazy times. At one point, Fujifilm was the affordable Leica, and now I feel like we're actively having to look for the affordable Fujifilm, which just doesn't make sense. So now we get into the affordability of this complete setup and then each of the Fuji X100 lineup. This EM10 body goes for $166 on the used market. And this lens goes for $280 on the used market. However, the lens I can only seem to find in excellent condition. However, this body you can get in good condition. Good being cheaper than excellent. This totals $446 for this entire camera setup. This is based off of pricing found on MPB for this camera setup. Now comparing this to the price of the X100 series, please relax, it's going to get a little bit intense. So I'm able to find the X100, X100S and X100F on MPB. So I'm using that for those prices. And then the X100T and X100V, we are going off of a median eBay price. I feel like I'm 
I'm doing numbers and I've got glasses on. I feel official. The X100 goes for $561 for the original X100. That's insane. That's not right. The X100S goes for $645. The X100T goes for $765. That's madness. That's madness. There's actually one in my city at the moment in a used camera shop going for £600, but that's like with a guarantee and a few other things. But yeah, the X100T is crazy overpriced. The X100F, remember, remember the X100F has a lot of shared things compared to this camera, a lot of similar features, same burst modes, etc. The X100F now goes for $1,064. I'd like you to bear all these numbers in mind with that spreadsheet I showed you and all the features comparisons with the EM10. It's nuts, it's actually nuts. And lastly, the X100V, you already know how much this costs. At the moment, the median cost I'm getting from eBay in dollars is $1,676. So at the moment, this camera with this lens setup, and bearing in mind, this is an interchangeable lens camera. You can pair it up with whatever you want, but specifically this setup comes to $446. It's the cheapest of the bunch, and it slots very neatly in terms of spec comparisons between the third generation and the fourth generation. The third generation being $765, not quite double the price of this, but close enough. And then the fourth generation being just over $1,000, which is over double the price of this entire setup. You could get this camera and this lens with an additional lens, like a portrait lens, for the price of the X100T, for way less than the price of the X100F or X100V. As I've mentioned a couple of times already in this video, this camera uses a full third sensor compared to the Fuji APS-C size sensor. And I have been a full third skeptic a lot in the past, but using this camera with a few different lenses has definitely changed my mind. And compared to using my X100 that I would take on holiday with me or to festivals, I am much happier taking this camera and a couple of lenses in tandem with something like a 35mm camera or just this camera on its own. Before you know it, you won't just feel like you're shooting with a Fuji camera, you'll actually believe you're using a Fuji camera. And if you're still not satisfied with having an interesting color system and quiet shooting experience, go check out this video over here on a $100 camera from 2007 that provides a unique and relaxed street photography shooting experience.